if everyone can tie a knot in it, then we're up for a 22 minute drive north very shortly. <laughs> there it is, that's not a river, that's a road. Oh, so that's how you do it. So I think we know the reason as to why the waters are empty. Oh, I just got stung on the back of my leg. Hi, I'm Daz and she's B, and we're on a 12 week road trip round France with our boys and our greyhound Sammy. Join us as we explore the history, beauty and fun we can squeeze in while getting to grips with the challenges of working and home educating on the road as a family in France, living a life less ordinary as we escape in the motorhome. So we're having a bit of a, a powwow this morning as we smell yes, the morning toilet. Meeting. Morning, <laughs> yes, yes. morning meeting regarding the plops. Yes, just going to show you this is on park for night. Wow. So this is you got Marseille there and we're down there. This whole area, um, there are hardly any in this whole area, given the volume of traffic down here. Um, there's just not enough. This one is a little blue station, I think, in a petrol station somewhere, hopefully not on a toll road. It's a 22 minute drive north in the wrong direction really for where we're going, but there is just nothing around here. There is mention of a place called Marley Park in Marseille. It looks like once upon a time someone tried to build a really big motome air, but the last reference to it I can find is a little YouTube video in 2018. It seems to have possibly died a death since then. So, we're at uh, if everyone can tie a knot in it, then we're up for a 22 minute drive north very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what you'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly, it isn't just a case of going and staying in a campsite because all the campsites are really, really booked up. So there's no chance. I've just called a couple and they're complete. So there's no chance of that. So this sort of area at this time of year, you've got to pre-book and we've heard that anyway. So we were just trying to dash into Marseille, do a couple of things off our hit list and dash out. But of course, when you've got five people producing five lots of waste, then you are gonna need your services, you just are. And that's something we perhaps didn't consider. So here we are, at just before nine o'clock this morning. And my goodness me, it's, it's, I feel like talking about the motorway. Oh, this commute is terrible. And it's like a morning constitution. You come down and you get your vitamin C. S-E-A. Sammy's got some good sniffs this morning. I think that's what's really nice. It's never a dull moment when he's out on his walks, that's for sure. And this is really good for dogs. Yeah, so certainly not as much dog poo in La Ciotat, if that is how you say it. I'm sure it's not, as there was in Marseille. That was just dog poo central. Yeah, so 9am 9, 9 and it's like um, the middle of the day in South Sea. South Sea is our nearest beach seafront. We are lucky enough to live very close to the sea in the south of England. Today, we're going to try out the, f I love this because it sounds like fig rolls and we're all a big fan of fig rolls. We're gonna try out the Colonk fig roll. And I was reading last night that uh, the couple that run the cafe back in the 1950s, they loved the area so much, they bought this cafe and they decided to declare it their own area with their own currency and passport. Obviously, it's not official, but they said that you can pay for things with figs. Uh, and now their grandson runs the restaurant down there. So I think it was something like a kilo of figs equals 10 euros. So if you go and have a meal in their restaurant, you can still pay for your meal with kilos of figs. Oh, this bit is lovely. It's a walkway just for wheelchair users and also this area of the beach. I've seen that a lot in France. So I was just saying to B how nice this promenade is in this smaller town. So rather than heading to Marseille, a couple of bays along, it's a little bit quieter, although it's still very busy this morning. But um, there's a nice feeling here, a nice vibe. I think I would have been happy just staying here for the weekend. So nice morning walk. We've got our baguettes. We've got the two veggies, the pan au chocolat. And now we're going to drive the 22 minutes to hopefully, fingers crossed, empty our waste and maybe fill up. If we do that, we know today is going to be better than yesterday. No, that's not a child suite. That is the path that we're taking. There it is. That's not a river. That's a road. And that's the road we're on. And that's what happens when we don't take the toll road and we yeah. go to the national park. Yeah, it's the scenic route. We've got to take the scenic route. Yeah. And it's sloshing out absolutely full to the brim uh, cassette <laughs> around a smell. tree. I thought it was you, but I 
Yeah. I mean, it's super hot. He must be mad. Oh. Joe Reeves will be proud of you. Absolutely beautiful. And what I like, you've got a cycle lane on this side, a cycle lane on that side. It's completely safe for the cyclist. Unlike most roads in the UK, where poor cyclists sometimes get treated awfully by aggressive drivers. There's a real attitude shift that needs to take place in the UK as far as I'm concerned. Oh my gosh. This is like a dream come true. It's and it's right. in an area with lots of people. This, this I think will be maintained. It has to be maintained. People must have to use this one. Right, I'm gonna yeah, help you. Got an audience there. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see this. It actually looks clean. It looks cleaner than ones that we've seen. I actually don't have a problem with touching that handle. Obviously I'll use hand sanitizer uh, afterwards, but. I did read but one reviewer said they couldn't find this and they walked around for five minutes but actually I saw it from the road and uh, thank goodness it's here because like, my nose was burning and my eyes were watering it was like chopping onions in there oh so that's how you do it today's wild goose chase is getting a two euro kind change to one euro so it's gone into Burger King they're not open yet and now Daz has sent me over to this massive queue of cars. Can't even see the person in the machine. Maybe I'll just wait until this queue has died down. I don't know, like I'm trying to steal people's money. I'll wait till she's paid. She did it. She swapped it. She was nice. Even in my dodgy French. Let's hope we can get 20 minutes of water now. And then we're all set for our Colonk weekend. It's never ever just get out of the motorhome, chill out like we see so many people doing. It's always like a two hour mad dash around. So if there's one thing we would like to add into the trip, it's just more rest, less chasing around. But then you've got five bodies, five lots of waste, five lots of water consumption. And we're not even washing that much. At the top of a cliff, as you might imagine, there's not a lot of space to manoeuvre. The only car park we passed was full, so we took to the streets to try our luck. Not easy when your van's seven metres long. One. We found a motorhome space. Oh, thank you, council. And that one's from motorbikes. Oh, ee, up a dubba doo. What was that? Uh, okay. Yeah, there's a conifer or some sort of fur right there. Right, we're in a parking hotspot here, the start of the route to get to the Colonque de Figaro, or Figaroles, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, and last night we managed to park for three euros 80 on the street, so all night. Today's parking, slightly more expensive. Yeah, so we've done four hours. Uh, if we leave at 25 past four, that's 11 euros 40. So, not quite three times the price, but this is obviously premium compared to where we were. Again, nice big long motorhome parking space. But yeah, still not quite big enough for our tires. It does go on all the way to here. But I think Stampy might have got a bit of an injury. And there's the fig trees in the picture. And I'm assuming this is the restaurant. And it says here, Independent Republic of Figaro's since 1956. <laughs> oh, let's have a look. Oh, that poor cicada has been munched, hasn't it? He's empty. Right, let's enter the Independent Republic of Figaro. This is something else. <laughs> Wow. And apparently that red stone, even though it looks very brittle, apparently it's very resilient. Which doesn't surprise me, because look at the shape of that dog's head. It's a very precise ear. It doesn't look like it's going to tumble. It does look like it's going to tumble down, but apparently it hasn't for some time. So that probably confirms it. Ah, maybe this is where you can pay with figs. Just going under this fig tree here. Maybe this is the famous fig tree. 
Well, it could be a lot worse. It's not a great big crowd, it's perfect. Say Puffy. Oh, so around the front, that long bit is the snout. That that's the snout, the that's the eye, and that's the ear. And apparently this is the lion here. But I'm guessing we'll need to swim out a little bit further to find out why it's called the lion. I'm wondering if that's the back and the head. So I think we know the reason as to why the waters are empty and as to why it's not absolutely round with people down here today is that everybody's been put off by the little jellyfish. Now we've seen two brave English souls go out into the water. They've got sung a couple of times. We've looked up the type of jellyfish that it is and it could be a sting that lasts maybe for a couple of days to a couple of weeks. It's not, uh, it's a bit like a stinging little rash. The three boys have got wetsuits and wet shoes, but I've got to go back to the motel home, get the wet shoes and get the goggles, because we think when we still get out of the clock, a bit further out in the bay, hopefully there'll be a few less jellyfish. Now, although you can't see it from above the water, when you're out there on the paddleboard, there was a jellyfish every two to three feet, so every sort of 50 to 90 centimeters. So any exposed skin was likely to get stung. Oh, I just got stung on the back of my leg. Yeah, I just got stung by that jellyfish there in the water on the back of my leg. See you later, mister, thanks for that. Maybe it's time for me to get up on the rock. <laughs> well, that was interesting. I've just been stung by a jellyfish. Second time in my life. The last one was when I was 30 years old, which was a millennia ago. So as clear as it looks here, one did creep in with the swell and just catch me on the back of my leg. And it's just like someone giving you a tiny pinch and sort of not letting go. Dang it. Oh well, been here, done that now, haven't I? But it's safe to say that I think if the kids get it, they'll, they'll survive. That's where we just come from. Summer over there is B. Relaxing in the sun, I hope. What have you got? Rubbish, good for you. What's your ankles? So the boys have picked up some litter with the primary reason to collect jellyfish. As you can see, we weren't gonna let a few jellyfish spoil rock jumping for me and the boys. Jump outwards, please. Oh! Oh! All of these bubbles. If I live to regret this, I'll be happy. <laughs> if I die. Yeah, I kind of feel like goggles aren't appropriate, but I do want to be able to see uh, if there's any jellyfish by my. Oh, I can't see any. There aren't any. Okay then. Three, two, one. I didn't really... Good! Indy, did you go jump to heights? I don't think so. Looking out into the blue, you can see them. Yeah. 
You can see there's millions of jelly. So the boys have had an amazing time jumping in. So thank goodness for wetsuits, thank goodness for paddle boards, and even Phoenix has gone out now. So this beautiful bay where there's nobody in the water, sometimes it's worth having those things in your motorhome so you can access things fully. And actually all three of the big ones, Daz, Indy and Etty, have had a little sting on the ankle, stung for 10 minutes, and now they're okay. That's only because these jellyfish are not dangerous. Obviously, it's always worth doing your identification first. Can you collect any more? Like when they can't breathe. No. Well, that's a pretty, uh, pretty good result today, considering uh, we thought we were going to have to give up on it once we saw what was in the water. Yeah. So, Medusa, the jellyfish, everyone's yeah, panicking about it. Shower. Yeah, I think everyone could do with a shower. Yeah, now I'm going to annoy everybody by letting off in terms of letting the air yeah. out. <laughs> Now the kids have got a bucket full of water so that the jellyfish stay alive. Hilariously, the kids have gathered quite a crowd and they're all watching the jellyfish inside the bucket. It's very cute. And he's been stung around the wrist and on the ankle several times. Apparently the one around the wrist was fairly painful, but after 10 minutes it subsided. So, we had a wonderful day at the Figaro Colon. And now I'm taking Sammy out for a walk in back in Siula and um, found a shady street. Well, that's all we've got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a like and there's plenty more to come on this 12 week round France trip. If you want to see where we've been so far, don't forget to check out our channel and until our next escape, thanks for watching. Bye.